Hello guys, welcome to Inspiring Minds. This is Dr. Sonal and today we are going to study endometriosis. First, let's see the structure of uterus. Now, this is the uterus. We have different parts of uterus. First one is the topmost part, which is the fundus of uterus. Then we have the body of uterus. And then the lowermost is the isthmus. Now, this is the ovary attached with ovarian ligament here. Then we have uterosacral ligament here and this one is the broad ligament then the uterus is lined by three layers first one is the the outermost outermost layer this is the perimetrium and then in the middle we have myometrium which consists of smooth muscles and the innermost layer is the endometrium now in endometriosis this endometrial tissue is present outside the uterine cavity. It could be present anywhere. But the most common site is ovary. Followed by pouch of Douglas, which is the second most common site. Followed by uterosacral ligament. Then broad ligament and last one is the fallopian tube. Now, we have scar endometriosis. If the endometrial tissue is present in the scars of different surgery, it, it is called scar endometriosis. This could be caesarean section scar or episiotomy scar or scar of pelvic floor repair. Then it is called scar endometriosis. Then there are different theories explaining this endometriosis. First one is the retrograde theory. <coughs> In this theory, suppose this is the uterus. Normally, blood will flow in this direction, but in endometriosis, blood flows in this direction. And here we have ovary, and below that, here is the somewhere here is the pouch of Douglas. Now, blood gets accumulated. In this region and then it enters the pouch of Douglas so this theory retrograde theory explains why blood gets accumulated inside ovary and pouch of Douglas then we have theory of implantation given by Samson then we have another theory given given by Mayer and Ivan Hoff that is theory of silomic metaplasia then we have then we have metastatic theory given by Halbin. Now, let's see the pathology of endometriosis. Basically, it is high, it is a hyperestrogenic condition due to excessive secretion of estrogen. There are different risk factors related to uh, hyperestrogenic condition, and there are di uh, different protective factors as well. So, first we will see the risk factors. First, we have under this obese females. In obese females, there is a lot of adipose tissue. As a result, they have high estrogen levels. As androgen gets converted to estrogen in adipose tissue. So since there is a lot of adipose tissue, the estrogen levels are also high in obese females. So for this, in the protective factor we have physical activity then the next one is nulli paris females then under protective factor we have multi parity and pregnancy now The third risk factor is early menarche and early and late sorry late menopause. Now due to early menarche and late menopause these females are exposed to estrogen for a longer period of time. 
so there's early and long exposure to estrogen in these females and the last one is late marriage and late childbirth which is usually seen in high socio economic status so this is more common in high socio economic groups in protective factor we have first we have physical activity multiparity pregnancy and then we have one more thing here which is smoking now smoking inhibits aromatase enzyme and we need uh, aromatase for androgen to gets converted to estrogen now let's see the gene associated with endometriosis so the gene associated with endometriosis is k ras and most common age group affected with endometriosis is 30 or more than 30 now the symptoms most common symptom in endometriosis is pain there are different types of pains pain seen in endometriosis first is the secondary dysmenorrhea followed by chronic pelvic pain followed by this peronia which is pain during intercourse followed by lower back ache now this pain is due to different reasons the first one is the congestion now in uterine cavity the endometrial tissue has a space to come out with blood but in endometriosis this endometrial tissue which is present in ovary or pouch of Douglas it proliferate and becomes hormonally active and sheds during cycle and there since there is no space for this blood to come out it gets congested in that space and as a result there is pain and it forms the in ovary this congestion of blood result in the formation of chocolate cyst now the second reason for the pain is high levels of prostaglandins the prostaglandin levels are really high in the peritoneal fluid so it is it also causes pain and then the severity of pain in endometriosis is related to the depth of the lesion now for the management we can do medical management in case of mild pain we can give drug like first we have to give <coughs> ansets if the patient doesn't get any relief then we'll keep patient on ocps if the pain is moderate to severe then we have to give drugs to decrease the estrogen levels so the first line drug in this case is progesterone and the followed by 
gonadotropin releasing hormone followed by letrozole which is a aromatase inhibitor followed by danazole and jetrinone this drug is not preferred as it causes hirsutism as side effect in young females now second most common symptom is infertility in case of mild infertility we'll try clomiphene citrate and intrauterine insemination for three cycles in case of moderate to severe infertility there are adhesions formed between uterus and uh, fallopian tube if this is a uterus and this is the fallopian tube adhesions are formed between them so in this case only treatment available is IVF now third symptom is chocolate cyst chocolate cyst most common site for it is the ovary and is always bilateral and the size is less than or equal to 12 cm now the chocolate cyst consists of hemocydrin tari blood and pseudoxanthoma which is the granulation tissue now for the treatment we have laparoscopic surgery and it depends on the size which laparoscopic surgery will do if the lesion if the uh, cyst is less than 3 cm then laparoscopic electrocoagulation is done if the size is more than or equal to 3 cm in that case we will do laparoscopic cystectomy now the fourth most common symptom in endometriosis is menorrhagia which is prolonged and heavy bleeding now let's see the investigation for the investigation <coughs> we have per vaginal examination in pv we'll see the fixed retroverted uterus an axial mass and nodules on the uterus uterosacral ligament now these nodules on the uterosacral ligament gives cobblestone appearance as you can see in this picture these are the nodules this bumpy appearance on the uterosacral ligament gives cobblestone appearance then under investigation we have transvaginal sonography in this we can see the chocolate cyst and it gives ground glass appearance as you can see in this picture now the next next investigation or the investigation of choice is laparoscopy now for the laparoscopy we can do laparoscopy of the ovary under which we can see bilateral chocolate cyst 
and laparoscopy of the uterus where we can find lot of things first is the small black blue lesions which gives gunpowder appearance and then we can, we also have red cystic lesions and then there are white scary lesions now in this picture this this is the gunpowder appearance and these are the red cystic lesions now the gold standard for investigation is histopathological examination and in endometriosis we have very high levels of ca125 for the management we have surgeries first is the adhesive lysis when there are adhesions then we have fulguration of lesions then then we have transabdominal hysterectomy plus bilateral salpingo oophorectomy the last one is laparoscopic utero sacral nerve ablation so this was the management if you like this video share it with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to our channel please consider subscribing it as it motivates us to make more videos like this and uh, until next time take care bye